there, spring is rolling around once more and it's time to start getting to work on the tiny home in Northern Michigan. This year I'm putting in a greenhouse and I'm using a gravity fed rain barrel watering system so that it will keep the vegetables watered when I'm not there. So we're putting in a couple of rain barrels, 55 gallon jobs that were pretty inexpensive. What I'm doing right now is I am making filters for the rain gutters to keep the dirt and debris from the roof from getting into the rain barrel and plugging up all of the tubing and everything that I'm using for the, for the watering system. What I've done is I've already made one and I'm going to show you how I made this. This is a filter made from uh, brass cloth. I've uh, soldered it with silver solder. It's what you use on probably jewelry and uh, we use it on electronics. So I made this filter sock. It goes right on the end of the rain gutter to catch all of the debris and everything. So yeah, when it gets plugged up, just take it off, wash it up, put it back on. It's pretty easy. So I'm going to show you how I make it. It's actually not that hard. If you have a soldering iron, you can make one of these yourself. I'm using a 100 watt soldering iron so that it doesn't take forever to heat the brass up and I can uh, make uh, a little bit of progress on this without uh, having to spend hours and hours soldering. So let's take a look at how I make these. This is the brass cloth that I use. Get this on Amazon, it's pretty darn cheap. In fact, I'll be able to get it on eBay or other places. You can see this is a very, very fine mesh. I don't know if you can see my hand through there or not. And it comes in uh, strips, I think 24 inches long by I think 16 inches wide. So it's just enough, just wide enough be able to do what I'm doing. I am using a 2x4 as my frame because that's about the size of a rain gutter and what I'm doing is I'm taking the brass cloth and I'm wrapping it around this 2x4 and making a seam much like you would make the seam if you were sewing cloth. What I've done first and I've already completed this step what I've done first is I have put the 2x4 on here and made two creases like you would in fabric in the brass cloth like this. You set your 2x4 on there like that so that the creases line up. And then all you do is take your brass cloth and start at the end, at this end rather than this end, and fold it over just a couple of times just like this camera's probably in a bad spot to be able to see this but basically what i'm doing is i'm grabbing it like this folding it once at about a half an inch and then folding it again like that so it's flat on here now i've discovered in doing this that the easiest thing to do to make everything um, solder together without buckling up is I pack one bit of solder right here in the center so that it basically holds down the rest of the fiberglass cloth. So what you're going to do is drop things on the floor and then you take your soldering iron, just put it on there, and this is a spool of silver wire or solder that I use for electronics and electrical work. It is 100% silver. I actually bought that roll of solder back in, I think, 1992. Bought it a long, long time ago. And I like this thin solder instead of the thick because it melts a lot easier. Feed enough in there so that it saturates the cloth. And there we go, I've made the little tack 
right there. So it holds it together. What I'll do is I'll turn this around so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So. Take this and take a good side of the soldering iron. That smoke that you see is what's called resin. It helps uh, any oxidization or anything that's on the metal that you're soldering. It helps uh, eliminate that so that the solder will stick better. So, take that, heat it up. There's another tack right there. The way I do this, let me reposition the camera so you can see this better. <clears throat> okay. There we go. I think that's a better position so you can see the technique that I'm using. Want to get a good stretch of your solder ready to go. Yeah, I got this in, uh, like I said, about 1992. And it's pure silver. And you can see I haven't even used up half the roll yet. back when silver prices were really inexpensive. All right, so what I do, put soldering iron on here like this, and then I trail along it with the solder. And you just slowly move soldering iron. And apply the solder. You may want to go back and forth a few times. It doesn't look like I'm adding any solder to it, but it, it is. It's soaking into the fabric. I've adjusted my technique since I've done, since I did the first one. Because I thought my soldering on the first one looked a little bit sloppy. Once you figure out how to do it and get your technique correct, it becomes pretty darn easy. When you get done, after you've applied to the solder, you can see right here that the solder soaks into the, into the fabric. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but the pattern of the fabric, you can actually see through the solder. You can see it on this solder too right here <clears throat> so basically what you're doing is you're going all the way down the seam from here all the way down to here and you can make these as long as you want I'm making them about this long about a foot long like that and down here basically what you do is you cut your fabric and then you just fold it like you were making a Christmas present and then solder that seam. Very easy to do. Only takes a little bit of time, maybe a little bit of practice. But if you order this brass cloth, you'll get a lot of it. So that you can make mistakes if you have to. Now I want to show you how I'm going to attach these to the rain gutter. Because as you can see, this cloth right here, it's actually, it's not flimsy, it's pretty strong. But once you punch a hole in it, it's going to start to tear around there. So what I've done is I have taken some washers like this. This is one of the washers that I'm using right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this washer. And I don't know if you can see that. Let me look at the camera and see if I can get this so you can see it. Let me get it so it just... There we go, like that. 
Now, I don't know if you can see that. Let me move this closer. See if the camera stays in focus. Now this is, you can see it's a fairly shiny surface, right? On the other side, what I've done is I've used a file to score this up, to make the surface rough. Because solder sticks a lot better when you rough up a surface. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is very simple. I'm just gonna put one of the washers on the outside of the fabric right here, like this, and I'm gonna solder it to the brass fabric. That way, I'll be able to run a screw through it and the solder will prevent the brass from tearing. And even with a 100 watt soldering iron, it takes a while to heat up your surfaces. So we'll just go ahead and let that heat up for a few minutes before I start applying solder. You know, the first soldering iron that I have had was made by a company called Skill, S-K-I-L. Some of you oldsters might remember that brand. But they had one soldering iron that you put a spool of solder in it and press the trigger and it would feed the solder out automatically. Pretty fancy back at that time. Well, I was only about 12 years old and just starting to learn how to do electronics. And I was messing around with my brand new Christmas present skill soldering iron. And wouldn't you know it, I pressed the trigger, the solder came out, melted, landed on my arm. And melted a hole into my arm. I think I've still got the scar from it. I'm not sure where, on which arm the scar is now but it's basically a dark patch of skin. Worked pretty good too. So once your washer heats up, you can really start applying solder. good. Wait for the temperature to cool down. And there we go. Now you can see right there, there is the solder on the washer. You can see it's still a little bit soft. And here is the washer itself. I'm going to go over this a few more times with solder because it shifted a little bit before the solder had hardened up. But you can see the concept that I'm going after here. And you put your screw into the rain gutter right there, and that way you can take it off and put it back on to clean it out. So let me... Nope, I take that back. It is soldered on there correctly, it didn't shift. I just put more solder on there than I thought. So all I'm gonna do is take a drill bit, punch a hole in here with the drill bit, and then screw it onto the rain gutter. So that's how you make one of these <clears throat> rain barrel filter socks that I'm going to be using up at the tiny home. And in my next video, I'm going to be extremely busy because this year I'm going up to the tiny home at the end of March, get started on the vegetable garden. So I have to build the greenhouse, put it together actually. Then I have to install the battery bank and get our new heating system hooked up. But since this is the first video, I will be very kind and end it in just a minute that you don't have to listen to me drone on and on any more than you already are. You see, there's the seam of solder right there as I put it on. It goes pretty quick. Once the soldering iron's heated up, once you uh, learn how much solder to put on there, it goes pretty quick. It's not that hard to do. The hardest part is, I don't know, finding a piece of 2x4, I guess. 
So there you go. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe so that you can see my next video with me mumbling about something or other. Thank you.